This is one that I've owned before and I rebought it just because I, uh, for whatever reason, I don't have the old one anymore. This is Home for the Holidays. And um, I, I really like this movie. I, it's kind of one of those movies that I, I really like to watch like at Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that. It kind of shows the craziness of, of American life, um, Midwest, you know, kind of average America. Uh, being what it is in society today to, to have your family all together and to meet at holidays and all the stress of that time of year. And it kind of, it just kind of hits home with, I think, with a lot of people, but it's not bad. You can hear that sound. I'm, I'm just going to briefly talk about this just because it's really kind of getting on my nerves. If you've seen these before, these recycled, I don't know. I, I've had a lot of discs that are kind of torn up. These are really flimsy and really lightweight, these uh, low plastic cases. I don't know. I, I'm just really bothered by that. Uh, this is one I haven't opened yet, but I've seen before. Rat Race. Uh, I found this at Walmart for five dollars. Probably nothing you can say about this. It's it's a funny movie. It's funny enough. It's not bad. If you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. It's not great, but it's good. It's another one I picked up at that time that I just kind of think I'd like to see again. This is another movie that's not great, but it's good. It's called The Jacket. Uh, it's Kira Knightley and uh, Adrian Brody. Uh, two really good actors in kind of a, an average psychological, you know, supernatural, you know, kind of movie. Um, not bad. I haven't seen this in several years, so I'd like to try it out again. But I got this really cheap Walmart also. This was $5. Uh, some of these movies I'm getting into now are some ones I've been really wanting a long time um, that are now out of production, out of print, so they're kind of tough to find. And this is The Elephant Man. Um, I saw this several times when I was really young and haven't probably seen it since the late 80s, something like that, early 90s. But when it very first came out on HBO way back when in the 80s, I was a kid and it was on all the time. And I really was kind of drawn to it. I don't know. There's something weird about the story of the Elephant Man. And it's kind of odd to think of a, you know, like a really small kid, like six, seven years old, really getting into this movie. But I did. And then now I've kind of grown into being a David Lynch fan through Twin Peaks and a lot of his other stuff. And um, I just want to go back and give it another chance. This is just a really hard movie to find. I think there's two different versions of the, of the Elephant Man cover. And I think they're both out of print right now or out of production. Uh, this is another movie that's kind of similar to that that I really like that I've been wanting to get for a long time, and this is the um, the movie uh, 1984. Uh, and this movie has John Hurt in it also. Uh, he was in the other one. Uh, this is kind of a hard movie to find. Really, kind of one of those things where uh, I like the book. Because I just like George Orwell stuff. I liked Animal Farm also. But um, I think this version of this movie that, that came out in 1984 also is kind of interesting because it kind of plays into like the way I remember around that time, 1984, um, because of the Mac commercial and everything, which also played off of the, the story, 1984. That was just kind of a big year as far as everybody finally coming to terms with what the future ended up being and what they thought it was going to be, you know, way back when in the 50s. But um, interesting movie. I mean, not for everybody also, you know, kind of like The Elephant Man, but interesting. Uh, this was a movie that was recommended to me on Amazon. I picked it up, City of Gold. Not bad. Um, uh, it's, um, and you can see that this is another one of those movies that has the thin, the low plastic cases, but you can't tell. It doesn't have holes in it, but it's really, you can see that. <laughs> then you'll know what I mean. This is this one's cut a little differently so that you can't tell it's low plastic, but it is. I mean, this case weighs like half of what a normal case would weigh. Um, very flimsy and kind of, you know, you're kind of worried about your disc if you ever try to mail one of these. Uh, this movie here is um, City of God. It's a foreign film. Uh, it's really pretty good if you like reading subtitles, of course. Um, it takes place in uh, Brazil, I believe. Yeah, I think so, Brazil. And it talks about it's a poor neighborhood and the life of crime that these young kids kind of grow up in the streets and everything. It's it's interesting. It's definitely one of those movies that if you would think you'd like things like that, you should try it out um, maybe on you know Netflix or one of those uh, places. 
Uh, this is a movie I had trouble finding. I was able to finally pick it up in, um, in Canada. The, the U.S. version is out of print, and apparently they're still making the Canadian version. This is Once Around. Um, and I had already said Home for the Holidays was a movie that I like, you know, that kind of reminds you of. This is kind of like uh, the same kind of feeling. Uh, in fact, it has Holly Hunter in this movie also. And when I think of Holly Hunter, especially early in her career, I always think of this movie. Then I think of um, Home for the Holidays and then also Raised in Arizona. Those are my three favorite Holly Hunter uh, movies of all time. And... Uh, uh, Richard Dreyfuss is in this also. I'm not a humongous fan of him uh, in general, but I think he's really good in this. This is another one of those just kind of the, like looking at uh, the perspective of the way families are, like how they're set in their ways and everything. You know, when you're an outsider or an insider, um, that kind of thing on the family. But interesting, kind of difficult to find, but, you know, you might be able to rent it. This is another one I picked up at Walmart. These are kind of out of order. It's a five dollar movie, The Sandlot. I hadn't seen this probably since high school, so I just thought I'd give it a try for five bucks again. I uh, I really don't even remember that much about it. It's been so long since I've seen it. We used to watch that a lot. Uh, and uh, junior high and high school, when I when I uh, when I played baseball in junior high, uh, that was one of those movies, kind of like Major League. You know, we'd all get together and watch it and stuff like during baseball season. Uh, this is another movie that I got. Fairly cheap on Amazon. I think this was like five ninety nine. Uh, this is House Two. Uh, a lot of people like House Two the best out of the House movies, which I only really consider House One, House Two. House Three is like not even really called House, and then House Four is horrible. Um, I've never even really been able to make it through those movies, you know, without just being bored with them. But House Two is kind of like a. Um, it says it's PG-13, but what's odd is I actually watched this at school in sixth grade. Our teacher thought it was really funny and interesting, and she showed it to us. It's just, I mean, that just blows my mind, but she did. And um, to me, House 1 is, is, is more of a traditional scary movie, even though it's not really that scary. House 2 is a little bit like the edge has been taken off of House 1. It's just kind of a little goofy and... Uh, it's got the elements of a scary movie, but it's done in a way that it's like, oh, I guess you would kind of compare it to something, oh, um, like a TV series for scary stuff that they would do for kids, you know, what I'm talking about, like, um, I can't even think of uh, the ones that they did like in the 80s and 90s. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what it reminds me of. Not bad, but not great either. Um, I just kind of was nostalgic for it. I just thought I'd check it out. Um, these are some of the newer ones that I just picked up. Like, in what I mean by newer is just recently because they were on sale. Uh, Mr. Woodcock for five dollars. It's marked nine ninety nine, but it was actually uh, five bucks or four ninety nine at Best Buy. Um, I think this is a pretty funny movie for five bucks. Um, I was just going to show it to a few people that hadn't seen it yet, so. That's uh, pretty much my my thinking behind getting this because I, you know, I don't think it's a necessarily a really great movie, but it's funny. Check that out if you haven't got a, if you haven't uh, seen it before. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton's really good in Sean William Scott's not too bad, but uh, it's got Amy Poehler and a few other people. It's pretty funny, you know, like in smaller parts. Amy Poehler. Uh, this is one of the movies that I got for cheaper than what this is too, and I had a coupon. But uh, this is Sex Drive unrated. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this movie, and it kind of got glossed over a couple years ago when it came out. Uh, there was a lot of movies that were coming out around this. It was kind of like um, the movie that everybody was trying to say was trying to be something more like Super Bad or something that was really popular, and this wasn't. Uh, but actually, it's got some pretty funny lines in it. Uh, it's, it's pretty crude, but uh, you know, if you like those kind of things, I, if you get this cheap, you should try it out. I think it's pretty funny. Um, it's got a few really good quotable lines in it. 